was desperate. And almost every time he walked into a new dressing room, people were laughing. Then I would get that feedback of, you're too small. Vets is never gonna believe in you. People having real prejudice against him because of his size. For so many surgeries, I got hooked on painkillers for a very long time. It was Eddie passed away and I just froze. For decades, Rey Mysterio has captured audiences the world over. He's an absolute fan favorite and one of the best high flyers in the history of the sport. In the ring, he faced off against opponents much larger than himself. The same can be said for his personal life. Ray experienced a disproportionate amount of tragedies and mental setbacks. The sport he loves above all else took close friends from him and affected his health, both physically and mentally. Yet Ray didn't give up. He kept fighting. In this documentary, we shed light on the dark sides of wrestling and the sad yet inspiring story of Ray Mysterio. You know, I was I was just very cocky and arrogant. I was very young, you know, I was immature, very immature. It was the worst pain I've ever felt. And then just pulling it down slowly, you know, and I really wasn't comfortable. I felt like I was naked. Ray meaning king, Mysterio meaning mystery. Ray was born into a family of professional wrestlers. He had the business in his blood. From a very young age, he watched wrestling shows in Mexico, cheering enthusiastically. At the age of eight, he began training under the guidance of his uncle, Ray Mysterio Sr. At 14, he made his debut. His talent was undeniable, he wrestled often and found his life's passion in it. Ray put everything into wrestling. He was bullied in school, not particularly good at most subjects, and consequently dropped out of high school. His dream was to become a big wrestling star, much like his friend, Eddie Guerrero. They met as teenagers at a show. Both grew up in wrestling families and shared the dream of becoming wrestling superstars. That's why they hit it off right away. Soon, they became best friends, inseparable. It was Paul Heyman who discovered the young Rey Mysterio. In 1995, he brought him to ECW. Heyman became a great supporter of Rey from then on, supporting him throughout his career. But Rey's entry into ECW was not easy. You know, I was... I was just very cocky and arrogant. I was very young, you know, I was immature, very immature. Ray's success in Mexico made him popular, a local star, and that got to his head. But that didn't last long. In the 90s and early 2000s, he experienced several backstage discomforts. Many wrestlers didn't take him seriously because of his small stature, slender build, and youthful face. Whenever he tried to book a hotel room or enter a bar with his ID, he was often mistaken for a minor due to his appearance. Others accused him of lying about his age. They thought his ID was fake. Ray's wrestler colleagues didn't immediately respect him. Some even bullied him. In 1995, Tommy Dreamer thought Ray was a woman. Backstage at ECW, Dreamer noticed Ray's thin, small stature. Allegedly, he even wanted to ask him out on a date. I would call my girlfriend at the time, who now is my wife, and I would break down. I would be bawling, crying, you know, saying I, I couldn't take it anymore, that I wanted to go back home, that I, I uh, just, I was desperate. I was desperate, I was lonely, I was tired. When Ray moved to WCW, he encountered prejudices and bullying too. While Ray had close friends backstage, for some, he was a joke. And almost every time he walked into a new dressing room, people were laughing. Especially at a time when height and muscle mass were essential qualities of top stars, hardly anyone believed that Ray could have a truly great career. They were wrong. 
Ray later said that some of his former bullies now have kids who are his fans. In hindsight, Ray smiles, but at the time, the disdain against him was very real and very painful. He had some mental health issues. They worsened due to a reckless booking decision. WCW President Eric Bischoff had a fateful idea. He wanted to unmask Rey Mysterio live in front of the camera. For a luchador, there are few things worse than losing the mask. The mask represents identity, honor, and tradition. Ray wore his uncle's mask and felt connected to his family because he did. For others, it's just a piece of fabric, but for Ray, it's his personal pride. The lucha mask is sacred because it's part of your identity. You put on a mask to represent who you become in the ring, and you protect that identity to the fullest. He decided that Ray should unmask after his match against Eddie Guerrero at Halloween Havoc 1997. When Ray heard about this plan, he was deeply hurt and angry. So much so that he refused to appear at the show, Eddie Guerrero supported his friend and spoke to the management. He pleaded with Eric Bischoff to let Ray keep his mask in vain. Eddie called Ray and persuaded him to show up despite everything. The dejected Mysterio reluctantly agreed. Minutes before the match, Bischoff had a private conversation with Ray, the mask stayed on, and Eddie would lose the match. It's not known what caused Bischoff's sudden change of heart. Nevertheless, a motivated Ray then delivered one of the best matches of the company. It's the epitome of Lucha Libre. They knew each other so well, countering each other's moves. Freaking match of the century to me, man. He is doing the most incredible moves you have ever seen in your life. Ray's matches with Eddie were incredible, wonderful displays of wrestling technique and things that you've never seen before. I was so proud of them because at the end of the night, they could hug and kiss and say, you know, thank you for a great match. Rey Mysterio did this thing where he jumped up to the top rope from the mat, did a backflip, and out of the backflip hit a DDT on Eddie Guerrero. It was the most amazing thing I'd ever seen. But two years later, it happened anyway. Scott Hall asked Rey Mysterio what the deal was with his mask. He was handsome, he didn't need it. Rumors arose that Hall had advocated for Ray's unmasking. Indeed, WCW officials forced Ray to remove it in 1999 after a hair versus mask match. And I really wasn't comfortable. Like I didn't want to go through that phase because yeah. I really, back then I really protected my face. You can see in his eyes how humiliating it was for him. Man, I just remember seeing the look on his face when he took it off. I can see the emotion in his face and just how genuinely upset he was when he tells my godfather, he goes, come on, let's go. That's a legit let's go because he was bummed and he wanted to get out of there because since he was 14, he had been wrestling with his mask on. When you do decide to take off the mask, I imagine was not what you wanted. Not at all. Ray felt uncomfortable without the mask but had to compete without it for a long time. During this time, he was extremely unhappy at WCW and began using drugs. Many are aware of Eddie Guerrero's drug problems. However, Ray often took the same substances as his best friend, even after his move to WWE. Much like Eddie, Ray numbed his pain with recreational drugs and painkillers. During a federal investigation, it became clear that Ray obtained illegal prescription drugs from Dr. Phil Aston, who supplied 17 athletes with illegal substances and was sentenced to 10 years in prison. One of his clients was Oscar Gutierrez, alias Ray Mysterio. Ray testified under oath that he never bought or took steroids. In 2007, Sports Illustrated revealed that Ray obtained the steroids Nandrolone and Stanozolol, the same substances as Eddie Guerrero, Eddie and Rey Mysterio go way back, man, way, way back. 
And I'll tell you, these guys are damn near like brothers. They're super tight, super close. It makes it much funner when you're working with people that you love and that you know you can go out there and enjoy and have a good time. Ray and Eddie's long-standing friendship ended tragically in 2005. At just 38 years old, Eddie died of heart problems. You can find a documentary about his life and death on this channel. Ray wasn't far away when Eddie was found in his hotel room. When Mysterio heard about it, he dropped everything and went there. When he arrived, his best friend was already dead. Everyone knew about Eddie's health issues, but no one thought they would be so severe. I love you. This was not only my friend, my brother, my teacher, my mentor. Every time I was in the ring, I learned something different from him. Ray struggled to cope with the loss. He never quite processed this painful stroke of fate. For Ray, Eddie was the best friend he could wish for. Years later, he burst into tears when asked about Eddie. In an interview, Ray revealed that he still thinks about Eddie almost every day. For him, not only to be dealing with the grief of losing, you know, his best friend, Eddie Guerrero, but I mean, emotionally, he had to be a wreck. That's astronomical. I mean, that is ridiculous stuff. The heart on that guy, jeez. Because Eddie was gone, I think, uh, you know, I felt a heavy load on my back for carrying not just Rey Mysterio, but uh, a Latino brand. In 2006, he won the Royal Rumble. I want to dedicate this Royal Rumble to my brother, to mi hermano, Eduardo Guerrero. Mysterio, he did it! He did it! No, he did it! In the subsequent WrestleMania title match against Kurt Angle and Randy Orton, he was the underdog. Few truly believed in a title win for the greatest underdog in wrestling. I think a lot of people thought of Ray as great talent, but never going to beat the man, never going to be the guy to carry the ball. I was kind of skeptical about being signed or not. I would get that feedback of, you're too small, Vince is never going to believe in you. But in the end, this little man with the big heart stood there holding the gold, dedicating his victory to the memory of Eddie Guerrero. I was happy for him. It's almost like I still had a little bit of Eddie through Ray and to celebrate with Ray and to be able to see him succeed. I know that Eddie was following him and being in that ring with Ray and celebrating. Ray Mysterio is the biggest underdog in WWE history. A little bit of me was sad because I know Eddie would want to be there to get in the ring and hug him and, you know, celebrate with him. Ray's career peaked for several months. Then, after losing his title, some severe injuries resurfaced. These times were poison for Ray, physically and mentally. His drug abuse worsened, especially dealing with severe pain. His left knee in particular was a kind of Achilles heel for Ray. I ended up getting another surgery and it was probably the worst one of all. And I remember I was in mad pain. From 2006 onwards, Ray suffered injuries almost every year to the biceps or triceps, shoulder, wrist, but especially to the knee. It was the layoffs due to these injuries that dragged Ray into a dependency on painkillers. WWE suspended him twice for breaking the rules of the wellness policy. He talks about it openly in an interview with Logan Paul. I got hooked on painkillers for a very long time. His painkiller addiction was particularly severe in 2008. Unfortunately, it is very common for wrestlers to take painkillers and drugs. Kurt Angle admitted in an interview with ESPN to taking as much as 65 Vicodin pills a day. Rey Mysterio knew that this type of drug abuse was dangerous, but he couldn't help himself. Eventually, there was a turning point. His wife caught him taking pills on vacation once. She was shocked. My wife caught me one time. We were on vacation. She, she saw that I uh, was just out of it completely. 
but she gave me an ultimatum. She goes, uh, so when we get back home, you can either take your pills or you can take your family. You choose. And that, that really opened me up, man, and it made me a stronger person. As a family man, Ray decided against drugs. At least he tried to. The next workday, he went to WWE boss Vince and said he needed to take a break. He needed a drug rehab program. He was cool with it. He was like, it takes a man to fucking uh, man up to it. For 30 days, Ray was in the rehabilitation program. He describes it as one of the most helpful times of his life. So that, that was a big life changer for me. With the help of his family, faith, and detox in a controlled environment, Ray managed to break free from the cycle of narcotics at least for a while. November 15th, 2011, Rey Mysterio is set to compete in the main event at Raw today against the Hispanic heel Alberto Del Rio. As Rey walks backstage along the long corridors to catering, he already notices that something is wrong with his knee. He's not at 100%, he's in pain, and his knee feels anything but stable. Nevertheless, he is determined to get into the ring today. After all, it's a show in his hometown of San Diego. As fate would have it, Ray dives for a baseball slide during the match and tears his anterior cruciate ligament. Other ligaments in the knee are affected as well. Ray feels it. First two minutes of the match, I felt the snap. And I was like, ah, oh, shit, I'm fucked up, I'm fucked up. But somehow, he manages to finish the match, limping. He later says, all he did that night was make the pain worse. And I was like, no, 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 let's keep going. We kept rolling. I probably damaged it more. Yeah, for sure. 10, 12 minutes that, that I stayed in the ring. Oh my God. Ray loses the match. He can barely walk. Only with the help of the referees, he makes it back behind the curtains. It is the worst injury of his career. I tore my ACL. I uh, strained my MCL. They said pretty much my knee was, was dangling by one thread, so it was pretty bad. At the hospital, the doctor gives him painkillers, and Ray relapses. Doctor gave me painkillers. I remember it was the worst pain I've ever felt from the surgeries that I've had yeah. in the past. But this time, despite the pain, Ray doesn't give in to the drugs. He doesn't allow himself to tumble back into that downward spiral and manages to break free, at least mentally, because physically, there was no talk of a breakthrough anymore. Ray was sidelined, incapacitated on San Diego's hospital beds. Ray's frustration was immense. Once again, his body had given out. Ray had undergone over 12 surgeries on his left knee by then. A year later, he returned, only to have to pause again due to a knee injury almost immediately. He realized that he needed to make a change. His knee couldn't handle the high-risk wrestling style anymore. He adjusted some movements, tried to land more softly, rely more on opponents, and some moves disappeared altogether from his repertoire. But his knee problems continued. From 2012 to 2015, he had short runs followed by injury layoffs, one reason for this was Ray's radical wrestler mentality and his eagerness to get back in the ring as soon as possible, even when doctors advised against it. Ray continued matches, even when doctors told him not to. But the constant on-off not only confused WWE officials like the head of the company, Vince McMahon, it also had an impact on Ray's momentum. Fans were not as excited to see him as usual during this time. That was also due to the lack of creative plans for him. Ray frequently had problems with the booking ideas of those in charge. For example, when he became Intercontinental Champion. The rising Dolph Ziggler was supposed to take the championship from him. However, there was a problem. Ray refused to lose. He wouldn't. It was an unusual situation. Ray was a model professional and not known for being stubborn. However, he insisted on having a longer title reign. Ray frequently lost his titles very quickly, and this time he wanted to hold the championship for a longer period. 
But when Vince wants something done, he follows through with it. He let Ray have his victory over Ziggler. But a month later, he had to relinquish his belt to John Morrison. The frustration Ray experienced during that time was huge. He criticized WWE for excessively pushing Roman Reigns and imposing him on the fans. They were looking for a spot to fill in there, and he's, he's a good athlete, good entertainer, but uh, um, it's sometimes when he try to force uh, superstars down people's throat or the fans, you know, it's, it's hard for them to accept him. In 2015, he left WWE and continued his career in Mexico. He looked forward to returning to his roots. In March, he made his comeback with Triple A. However, even that was overshadowed by dark, dark clouds. It is one of the greatest tragedies in wrestling history. Rey Mysterio wrestled shortly after his return in a tag team match against Pero Aguayo Jr one of the biggest wrestling stars in Mexico. At the Crash Indie promotion in Tijuana, he absorbed some of Ray's moves. When he was hanging in the ropes, ready for the 619, he lost consciousness. The sequence of moves just before had caused Perro to break three vertebrae. It's unclear exactly when this happened and what move caused it. Many believe it was the collision with the rope. Criticism was mainly directed at the behavior of the referee in that moment. In the video of the incident, it can be seen that the referee realized the injury only when Aguayo didn't dodge Ray's 619 as planned. Despite a brief hesitation, he continued the match for about a minute while the wrestler and promoter, Conan, present at the ring, tried to provide first aid. Continuing the fight is not uncommon it's customary in the trade to not immediately stop the fight, even with real injuries, but instead to improvise a faster end to the match. The show must go on, appearances must be maintained. This attitude has deep roots in wrestling. In addition to sheer unprofessionalism, Aguayo's medical care didn't work properly, partly because the ringside doctor was still treating another injured fighter behind the scenes, and the stretcher needed to stabilize the neck was occupied. Ray's expression grew darker and more concerned over time. Aguayo was taken to a local hospital and was pronounced dead at 1 a.m. An autopsy later revealed that Aguayo was practically dead immediately after he fell into the ropes. When Ray heard this news, he collapsed. Once again, Ray lost a friend through wrestling, this time in a match with him right before his eyes. Many blamed him for Aguayo's death. All of this deeply unsettled Ray, and he seriously considered some of the fans' demands for him to retire. In the end, however, he decided against it. I'm not, I'm not retiring, I'm not hanging up my boots, uh, or my mask, um, I think uh, um, in, in honor of uh, Vijo del Perro Bayo, I think what he would want me to do is continue with what we love to do and it, that's entertain our fans. Always by his side, through thick and thin, was his family. Rey Mysterio and his wife Angie have been married for over 25 years. But their relationship could have been troubled in 1997 when Mysterio found himself amidst rumors. In 1997, the National Enquirer published an article about a possible romantic relationship between Ray and actress Jennifer Aniston. The two were good friends at the time and appreciated each other's work. Neither Mysterio nor Aniston confirmed the rumors. In the following months, Wrestler colleagues repeatedly approached Ray about this topic. Despite the uncomfortable conversation with his wife, Ray was secretly quite flattered to be associated with one of the sexiest Hollywood stars. But Ray has been a faithful husband for decades, a family man through and through. I appreciate um, the meaning of family because to me, it just, it's everything. 
His children Alia and Dominic both have a penchant for wrestling. Daughter Alia played a role on WWE television as she began dating Rollins ally Murphy in the storyline. Son Dominic is Ray's biggest fan. As a child, he loved watching his father wrestle. He's now making a name for himself at WWE. You would think, hey, his old man taught him how to do the 619. I didn't know how. I was jumping into it and getting stuck. Grab onto the middle rope and the top rope. And when you swing around, the bottom rope burns you right here. The top rope burns you right here. So you're going to get a rope burn no matter what. That's just part of the price you pay for doing a 619. The reason Ray returned to WWE was his son. He wanted to inspire Dominic and help him break through. But I also have my son that I also want to motivate and inspire so he can say, man, my dad, he never, he never quit. Dominic is very popular behind the scenes. His father has a great influence on him, accompanying him closely as a mentor and helping him navigate the complex world of wrestling. Rey Mysterio is known for the numerous tattoos on his body. He has the names of his children, Dominic and Alia, on his right and left biceps, a tattoo for his wife, and one with the initials EG in honor of his friend, Eddie Guerrero. Rey Mysterio is one of the most beloved wrestlers of all time. Behind the scenes, he is considered extremely respectful, full of warmth and joy for life. Similar to Eddie Guerrero, the same was said about him. It's impressive that Ray has maintained his positive outlook despite the severe pain, setbacks, and tragedies in his life. He cites his family as an anchor in troubled waters. And something else. Ray is a Christian and very religious. First, without God, I would not be where I'm at. He prays a lot and lives according to biblical values, like love your neighbor. Christian values are very important to Ray. That's why he founded a non-profit organization that helps people with autism. But above all, faith is a source of hope for him, something that brings his smile back. Despite many setbacks and challenges, despite tragedy and pain. I always thought Rey Mysterio was, in a lot of ways, maybe the greatest modern day wrestler. Rey Mysterio proves the old adage, it's not the size of the dog in the fight, it's the size of the fight in the dog. Rey Mysterio, to me, changed the business. This was a guy in 1994 who uh, was doing things then that other people still can't do. He's so smooth. I don't know if there's anyone that I'd rather be in the ring with. To me, Rey Mysterio will go down as one of the best entertainers in our business out of the thousands of guys that have participated. I was always considered the smallest cat in the ring, however you want to name it. Underdog, David and Goliath in real life. Just always had to battle from underneath to achieve my goal.